so you probably like okay this girl giving two videos in one day if you watch my previous video of my z gallery mini haul or my z gallery visitation video um but this video is going to be my tubal ligation experience um because that was something i went straight to youtube about when i decided to go ahead and have the surgery done um and i figured i didn't really have a whole lot of helpful videos when it got out there and i try to give you guys a lot of those videos when it comes down to like medical experience the things that i had done um so yeah i'm gonna give it to you in a really quick video and you guys know that sometimes the kids come running out here so if that does happen they family just like y'all my family so um yeah jumping into that so uh as you guys know if you have watched my previous videos that i did have a very traumatic third pregnancy with um my third baby because i did say third um i did have a very traumatic experience i did experience blood clots and several other things during that pregnancy so um when it came down to me having my tubes tied that was something that was very 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 highly suggested from my doctor she actually was like hey i think you should just get your tubes removed like take them suckers out don't burn them don't tie them just donate them okay um because as i stated before having blood clots um while you are pregnant is a life or death situation it is one of the the leaders um the leaders the highest and leading causes to um mortality you know when it comes down to um maternal death you know so anyways they suggested that hey you know what you got your three kids you know whatever you're at this age limit you know maybe you should just go ahead and get your tubes removed well i couldn't necessarily have that process done immediately once i had birth because once you give birth you know you immediately have to go back on to your blood thinners and that is something you know um that's the surgery they have to cut you open and it's something you know they don't want to do everything at the same time so they try to tell you like hey when you come in for your six week appointment you know we could talk about this well for me at the time that um it was supposed to come up for me i ended up moving so i was not able to get my tubal done after um my when well, my six weeks was up so the day i was supposed to have surgery was the day i moved so for me you know it was something that i was like you know what it, it's a scary thought you know because even though you're like i don't want no more kids i'm done with kids i'm kids crazy they drive me crazy hell no this hurt no more babies out of me it's still a part of you that's like dang you know i can't do this if i do this like i can't it's no longer my choice it's no longer my damn choice <laughs> so you know it's like you kind of mourn that part of you you know when you're just thinking about it like man like i you know what i was put on this earth to do as a woman i will no longer be allowed to do unless you know it's just some miracle that happens here which is possible because it happens to many people you know just hope it don't happen to me okay um but yeah so basically um they do give you so like when you have the situation of being on blood clots or anything or with you having blood clots and being on blood thinners you cannot get on birth control that has hormones there's only one birth control and i think that's like a copper iud that doesn't have like the estrogen in it that you know causes the that conflicts with um or that could cause you to have like the um the blood clots so uh for me i don't believe in having iud's that is not for me i don't want anything that is unnatural just staying in my body over time because i just don't feel like that is what we were we're supposed to have i doesn't feel like it's sanitary but that doesn't mean that you know if an iud is for you says go get it you know what i mean like if that's for you and that's um i think that you can keep it for like five years it doesn't have any hormones things like that or whatever but like i said for me I, I was just like hey look I'm, that was my only option and I wasn't with it or either be on nothing and obviously nobody wants to keep popping out babies you know I don't have my daughter you know but at the same time I wasn't willing to keep trying after you know this experience that I had previously and it was highly suggested from my doctor to you know and I trusted her 110% so you know that's for me you have to take um anyway you have to do what's best for you um when it comes down to everything in the bottom line so to give you what you came to this video for if you clicked on this video um basically how it went down to so i didn't i had my surgery just uh, a year ago so i waited till my kid was almost two years old to uh go back and have my my tubes tied it was something that i most definitely gave thought to i had time to give thought to i didn't you know rush right into it because for one i was really scared 
after you have a blood clot, like you you dead scared on like ever being there. You know, like kudos to those women that go back and get pregnant and have it again. Because for me, I was like, uh, uh I ain't trying to do no more shots. I ain't trying to do nothing. Like, nah. What can I do to never have to like have this happen to me again? You know, crossing my fingers. So again, I contacted um, a new doctor. Um, and so I went straight, I found me an OBGYN. I contacted them. I said, Hey, you know, I'm interested in having a tubal ligation done. Um, can I come in, you know, for a consultation or, you know, whatever. So I make the appointment, I go and I visit the doctor. He asked me why, you know, do I want this done? Am I sure da, 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 because I'm still young, you know, whatever. So I'm like, Hey, I'm, you know, at that time I was 28, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty certain you know this is why and when i told him that i had blood clots because obviously you know i was fearful kind of explaining my situation to another doctor um but when as soon as i told him i had blood clots he was like oh yeah no yeah no we need to go ahead and do this you need to have this done because you know the risk is so much greater and i just remember that feeling that i had when i looked at my two kid, my other two kids when i was going into labor with my third son like i definitely uh don't want to ever feel like I'm leaving them or that they could have to live without me due to me some due to something I can have control over so like I said you have to do what's best for you and your family um and most of all you, yourself so like I said for me this was something that I knew okay I'm gonna go ahead and do uh so he you know he was like are you sure or you know since so they kind of they give you a pap smear uh they make sure that everything's good to go you know uh that you know nothing is going on that needs to be fixed i guess before you go ahead and have that and once he gives you that good bill of health and everything comes back okay uh i booked my schedule i scheduled my surgery that day so um they make sure your insurance is good with it if you need any paperwork to have to sign for that um because your insurance um can cover this even though it's after um and so for me i went with a a doctor that worked at a hospital that doesn't believe in birth control so uh we end up having to go to a different location or a different hospital uh to do the surgery um because like i said it was against uh that hospital's wishes or you know against what they believed in so basically we scheduled that surgery uh, i want to say that we went in pretty uh it was pretty early got there signed in did the paperwork of course you have to fast before you do anything um, because you're going into surgery you're going to be out and you're going to be put to sleep so i did have to fast i was not able to have anything to eat um it's typically a same day surgery and actually i want to say that um it wasn't super late that we went in there but it wasn't super early I don't quite remember the time frame but basically once they get that paperwork they take you back they get you undressed um you go sit in like you know for me it was like little rooms separated by like curtains and the doctor comes in and talks to you and he asks you again are you sure this is something that you want to do are you sure are you sure are you sure you like hey dude we ain't gotta you ain't gotta ask me nothing else no more unless you're gonna take care of the next child to come up out of me go ahead and take it like take the shit all out all right so um he was like okay and according to this doctor when i told him that my previously doctor suggested taking the tubes completely out he was like hey burning them clipping them time all that stuff is the same he was like you know it's permanent make sure you you good with this and as we do know that there are reversals there are things that people are doing to try to reverse this process we do know that there's a percentage that it can fail but the doctors tell you like hey this is solid baby making is over for you you know so um from there uh, they hook you up to an IV and it's a waiting game until they come back and get you so once they come and uh get you for your surgery because you are you know naked you hear that that is why that is why i donated them tubes to somebody else okay the crying you hear is is, is donated tubes because i don't want to hear that no more <sighs> so anyway you're not welcome here So yeah, um, so basically, like I said, you go, um, they take you back there, someone takes you back in a wheelchair. Uh, you do have to have a driver because like I said, this is something that you're gonna be sedated and someone needs to be responsible enough when you come out of anesthesia to um, be aware of you know the instructions to be able to drive you home. You are gonna be in pain. 
Um, so the, they told me like, hey, you can go back to work the next day. People go back to work the next day. Da, 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 da. That's all the stuff they told me, you know? So I'm like, okay, well, great. You know, no fear here. If people go back to work the next day. Must not hurt that bad, right? All right, well, um, I come out of surgery and by the time I'm back out of surgery, like, I don't even know it. You know, um, my dad, he took me to my surgery. So, um, by that time, by the time I got out, these kids going to drive me crazy. So, um, yeah, by the time, by the time I got out of surgery, my dad, my dad had already gone to, um, the pharmacy to pick up my medicine because they do give you pretty, um, strong drugs to, uh, take like oxycodone, you know, things like that for the pain and my god the pain can we talk about the pain do y'all want to talk about the pain let's talk about the pain it hurt it hurt okay shout out to all you mothers out there that had a c-section y'all the real mvp okay i'm gonna say it again y'all sis are the real mvp okay because they give you this little incision right uh above like like your like your pelvic area i guess where it would start you know like that panty line they give you one right there and i had one um like in, near my, my belly button so i had two holes i thought i was only going to get one but i had two okay and both of them just hurt okay yeah both of them so then it was like my chest hurt and i kept crying i mean i was like boohoo crying and i think that i'm pretty tough but I was like boo-hoo crying, okay, from my chest. And they kept saying, well, she's gonna, this is gonna happen because when you have a breathing tube in, it's putting like all this air into you. So you feel like, I guess it's like gas. You have a lot of um, air in your chest or whatever. And to me, that, that was like a scary pain for me because I'm like, why does my chest feel so heavy? It felt like an elephant was sitting on my chest. And I did not like that feeling. It scared the hell out of me and it was not something that i was prepared for so prepare for that okay prepare for that feeling and know that if you feel it they say that it's normal um but uh i was still connected you know like to ivs and things like that and you cannot leave until you use the bathroom um and for me it took hours like i was the last one in there it was dark and i still couldn't leave because i couldn't go to the bathroom like it i couldn't get myself to to use it and it, it just hurt like i said it hurt like heck okay so for me this was like the first time i ever been cut open or had an incision or anything when it came down to like my abdominal area um and they tell you like you know that everything was complete that it was you know it went well and you're just like okay but you didn't tell me i was gonna die like <laughs> you didn't tell me like this was gonna hurt so bad um and I literally, I couldn't walk. My dad had to carry me. I couldn't go up any steps. I mean, it was just bad. I was, <laughs> I was ugly. I was making ugly faces. I felt ugly. And at that point in time, I was like, what the hell did I do? Um, but even not in that, not in more so the process, because that was like, you know, just kind of cut and dry. I did eventually end up getting to go home um, because I was able to kind of, uh, I think they ended up like cath using a catheter for me. Um, because I could not go to the bathroom. Cassidy doesn't want us to get through this video. He doesn't want you to get valuable information. So, um, yeah, but I wanted to talk about the after. Um, they say that having your tubes tied or anything like that doesn't deal with anything that's um, hormonal. And I'm here to say that I disagree. I went through uh, a stage where I was like, man, I felt like I was hitting postpartum depression all over again. I It was not a good feeling for me. Um, I called the doctor, I made an appointment with the doctor and he pretty much was like, oh no, this doesn't have anything to do with what I did to you and da da da. And I kind of started Googling some things and seeing if someone else felt like me or if this was just me going crazy, like why was I feeling this way? And there were articles out there where other women were basically saying like, you know, they really think that it's a connection because they were having some feelings. Um, and he was like, well, it doesn't have anything to do with what I did. You know, if you're, if you're feeling emotional or if you're feeling this way, it's because you have a past of this or this and a third. And I don't agree with that. Uh, me personally, I do feel like, hey, obviously you're going through a, a, a change in life and it's something that is new. And 
you made a decision that's very permanent but um I think that even on good days I was just like man why do I feel like this again you know like what is happening and I don't see why they wouldn't think that it's a connection I mean they're changing things in your body that we were not created to be you know what I'm saying like we're, we're changing something about us and I don't see why they wouldn't think that hormonal things could happen to you so for me I did have a little time of where I was like man like I pray this is the end of this because I don't want to go back through postpartum depression anymore and eventually it subsided but um again like i said that was just my take on that um i didn't have to go back on blood thinners during the process um he did suggest that i take an aspirin at, daily or whatever he, he he told me i should take one every day anyway um but i'll i'm kind of like mm, if i don't have to do this i don't want to do this because that's still like pushing meds that you know I mean, I understand preventative measures, but sometimes you take one thing, it starts another thing. So, um, yeah. So anyways, that is my take on uh, getting my tube side in the process. And hopefully that gives you some insight on what to expect. Um, babies are beautiful. Babies are a blessing. Babies is bad. Toddlers are bad. Toddlers try your gangster. Ain't that right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't need no more of those. I'll say it for the grandchildren. So, anyways, um, if this video was helpful for you, uh, give it a thumbs up. Say <laughs> thumbs up. Mommy. Hmm. Is that a bracelet? Uh, yeah. So give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you like to see more of my videos. You can go ahead and hit the red button down below and subscribe to me. Check out my previous videos if you're interested in seeing anything about my birth story or about uh, being pregnant with blood clots and what to expect, what happened, and how my crazy birth went. Um, and even if you just like other videos, check me out. All right, so uh, thank you guys for watching. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.